computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. NMESC 2022 is presented to you by Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, University of the Philippines Student Unit. Co-presented by Prime Mechanical Engineering Review Center. Zion Studios PH. Brought to you by Davies Paint Philippines Incorporated. Our media partners, Spark Up. Our community partners, Bataan Peninsula State University Society of Mechanical Engineering Students, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Cavite Chapter, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, De La Salle University, Dasmarinas. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Midlo Union Campus Student Unit. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Emilio Aguinaldo College, Cavite. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Maragondon Branch. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Alfonso Campos. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, USTP Chapter. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Xavier University Chapter. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Technological Institute of the Philippines Student Unit, Manila. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Technological University of the Philippines Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Camarines Norte State College Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Coleo de Mutinlupa Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Bicol University Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite Student Chapter. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, National University Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Pangasinan State University Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, PUP Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Sursagon State University Student Unit, Sursagon Chapter. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Tarlac State University Student Chapter. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, University of Batangas Student Chapter. UP Geodetic Engineering Club And a special thanks to UP Mining Metallurgical and Materials Engineering Association Incorporation Hanggang malaki. Nathaniel Beaver A. Mendoza from St. Louis University. I am here to cheer and encourage our next board exams takers. Alam ko, marami dyan ang natatakot, nagdadalawang isip, napanghinaan ng loob. I would like to say that all of those are valid. Totoo yan, naranasan ko rin yan noong una. But, don't let it eat away all of your time. Walang mangyayari kung palagi tayong magpapaanino sa mga negative thoughts natin. Kailangan natin kumilos and make the best of our time if you really want to succeed. Don't wish for it, make it happen, o kaya nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. Kung tip sa review ang kailangan nyo, mga sabi ko, magkaroon kayo ng time management. Si Prime kasi araw-araw yung may lecture, araw-araw may isasolve, ganyan. Huwag rin kayong sana ma-overwhelm sa program ng Prime. 
kasi talagang kailangan yan. Marami pa sana akong gustong sabihin, pero I leave that for you to discover. Lalo sa techniques, tuturo yan lahat ng prime, prime sa inyo. Magaling silang magturo. Uh, so, anyway, gusto ko sanang magpasalamat sa pamilya ko, sa kanilang walang tigil na suporta, sa SLU, ME Department, at Prime Review na ibinuhus lahat ng knowledge at wisdom sa amin para mapagtagumpayan itong board exams. And most importantly, kay God na nag-guide sa atin. Thank you, God bless, lakad matatag. Ako po si Christian Justin Sese and I'm here to tell you how did I manage to get here even though na pandemic tapos puro online po yung review natin. Marami pong factors na consider and malaki pong factor talaga na tumulong is yung Prime Review Center with the help of Learn Hub PH app. As we all know, sobrang dami kailangan pagkaralan sa board exam and from experience, so as much as possible, memorize mo lahat ng formulas, concepts, and elements. But Prime Review Center was able to cover this, we were able to tackle these major concepts, elements, and formulas in a very systematic pacing. Tapos, yung mga calculator techniques, shortcuts na formulas, and different kinds of subjects. Natutunan ko lang sila dito, actually. And, pero yung Prime Review Center talaga. Binigay nila, hindi sila selfish. We also noticed yung mga videos na in-upload nila. Sobrang detailed. Like, matututo ka talaga. Like, step-by-step -step solution, ibibigay nila. Yung mga problems na sobrang hirap na parang andali lang kapag sinolve, ibibigay nila. Yung pag nakakita ka ng ganitong problem, paano isosolve to, anong una gagawin, didiscuss nila kung paano. Yung mga shortcuts, tips, and kung paano isosolve yung ganitong problem, didiscuss din nila doon. And kikita mo talaga na yung mga instructors and teachers na nagtuturo doon sa voiceover ng video, experience talaga. And sobrang dami namin natutunan sa kanila. And... Prime Review made this possible and we are very grateful kasi bumibilis kami mag-solve na dati parang 5 minutes per problem, parang 2 minutes na lang ngayon or 1 minute even. Sundan yung program ng Prime. I was able to make it. Kaya we are very grateful for them teaching us. Ang ating pong review ay online. At kung tayo man po ay may pangamba dahil dito, E eh sana po, alisin natin ang anumang pag-aalinlangan sapagkat si Prime naman po ay ibibigay lahat ng ating kailangan para tayo ay maging handa sa darating na eksaminasyon. Ganyan din naman po ako nung kami ay nag-review ng online na may pag-aalinlangan. Ngunit sa awa ng Diyos, sa tulong ng Prime, at sa pagsisikap, eh tayo po ay nakapasa. Which is, yun naman po ang gusto nating lahat. So magtiwala lang po tayo and do our very best during the review at tinitiyak ko po sa inyo na after ng ating review and refresher dito ay sapat ang ating kakayahan para sa ating darating na board exam. Good luck, God bless, and have a nice day. Okay, so good day sa inyo lahat. Ako pala si Engineer Marvin Ferrer. Ang top po ng last mechanical engineering board exam is held noong August 2021. And dito kami para ibahagi sa inyo yung mga kung paano nakatuloy itong si Prime Review Center na yun nga dahil sa pandemic. So nag-online review na lang tayo ngayon. So unang-una dito is napaka-flexible ng pag-review. Kung gusto mong mag-review ng gabi, pwede yung tablet. Kung gusto mong mag-review sa Starbucks, pwede. Kasi pwede mong i-download or kunwari, basta may wifi ka, pwede mong panoorin at sagutan yung mga assessment, mga videos, anytime, anywhere na gusto mo. Besides dito, syempre, na para may mga formula, mga elements na kayo may memorize, diba? Dito, bibigyan ka rin ng mga tips and tricks, mga techniques kung paano mas mamememorize yung mga kailangan mong kabisaduhin, mas mare-retain itong mga to. Mga index card, diba? Ito yan. Dahil nga sa Prime is, hindi lang ako naging engineer, naging top or pack or top notcher, diba? So, napakalain tunay talaga ng Prime Review Center na ito, kahit na pandemic. Thank you ulit sa Prime and... Napalain tulong nyo and sana mas madami pa yung matuluan na magiging soon to be engineers and thank you sa pakikinig and ingat kayo. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Engineer Emmanuel Villasin. Unang-una po gusto kong pasalamat sa Prime Review Center sa pagbibigay po ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga future mechanical engineers para po sa mga mag-review pa lamang at mag-detake pa lang po ng board exams. Ang sabi ko lang po is review smarter not harder. Kailangan po muna nating alamin yung mga weaknesses natin bago po tayo mag-focus sa other topics. At since online review nga po ito, kailangan po natin magkaroon ng disiplina 
dahil wala po nagbabantay sa, sa atin sa bahay. At kailangan po natin maglaan ng enough time to review. Sabihin na natin around 2 to 3 hours a day na pagsusolve po ng dire-diretso. Hiwalay pa po yun dun sa assessment na binibigay po ng prime. At huwag na huwag po tayo magpapanik. Dahil kapag nagpanik po tayo, meron pong chance na baka makalimutan po natin lahat ng mga na-memorize na natin. And lastly, huwag po natin kalimutan magdasal at humingi ng guidance. Yun lamang po, good luck sa ating lahat. And God bless po. Ayan. So, hello po sa inyong lahat, sa mga future engineers out there. Ayan. So, today gusto ko lang kayong i-inspire, i-encourage, at magbigay na rin ng ibang tips na nagamit ko sa pagre-review. And so, siguro marami sa atin dyan uh, naninibago at nag adjust pa sa online setup ng review. Ayan. Pero okay kayong maglala kasi um, it really works, guys. Yung program ng Prime, kita naman sa amin, mismong byproduct kami ng program na yan. And so, tsagain lang natin, tarang sundan din natin yung mga mga advice ng mga lecturers natin. So, yun yung unang tip. Um, sundan natin yung mga advice nila like pagsulat sa index card, uh, repetition ng formulas, and also mnemonics. Sobrang mahalaga na. Laking tulong sa akin yan. Promise. And also, tsagain natin yung mga 100 problems every day. Um, may mga problems talaga na hindi natin alam isolve, pero huwag kang madi-discourage kasi the next day, may solution naman. Aralin na lang natin yun. And then, lalong-lalo yung mga assessments, guys. Tsagayin natin yan. Sinaga ako talagang finish ko na aralin lahat ng hindi ko alam isolve. Uh, sinulat-sulat ko lahat yan. Inulit-ulit ko. And eventually, ayan, it really helped me a lot. Nakapasa naman tayo and nakaabot pa sa top 10. Ayan. So, talagang diskartehan lang natin yan, tsagain. And also, mahalag, pinakamahalaga is araw-araw naman na langin humingi ng tulong kay God. And bibigyan niya naman tayo ng strength and ng wisdom. Basta humingi lang tayo sa kanya. Ayan. So, um, hopefully, na-inspire kayo doon and sana nakakatulong. <laughs> Sabi nga nung isang great philosopher, <laughs> pag may goal ka, focus success. Ayan. So, God bless po sa inyong lahat. Good day everyone. I am Engineer Ding Lasan. Uh, recently, nagpatnay sa Mechanical Engineering Licensure Exam last August 2021. Uh, first of all, let us thank the Lord for this opportunity na binigay niya sa atin uh, na makapag-review at uh, makapagbigay ako sa inyo ng counting advices lang sa inyong mga review classes. So, uh, kung kayo ay napapagod, natatakot, nangangamba, uh, kung worth it ba ito, to the end, syempre yes, maging engineer ka sa dulo eh. Masaya kaya maging engineer. Tapos, yun niya, uh, every hardship ay merong kapalit na maganda sa dulo. Gusto ko lang kayo iwanan ng konting Bible verse uh, from Philippians. Chapter 4, verses 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, kung kay na namba, uh, papagod niya, matanga, papagod, tinatamad, nandiyan lagi si Lord para kabayan tayo. Ako, talagang huminga ako ng, ng uh, ano kay Lord, ng encouragement, na talagang huminga ako kay Lord na Dasal, dasal ako ng dasal sa throughout review, through the board exam, kahit ng board exam itself. After the board exam, talaga nagpapasalamat ako kay Lord na ginabayan niya ako talaga. Kaya yun, kailangan niyo lang talaga ng seek guidance through the Lord at matatakot. Good luck and God bless. Stay safe po sa atin. Uh, thank you very much. Passing the board is one of the greatest achievements that an average person like me can achieve. Topping it is a dream that only few gets to achieve. I myself never thought I'd be in this position, yet here I am. With passion to engineering, I get to boost my morale despite all negativities. With hard work and perseverance, I get to challenge myself and know my weakness and capabilities. With prayer, I get to know myself and what kind of engineer would I become. Magiging mechanical engineer ako. Claim it and receive it by faith. This what kept me going through the journey of becoming the top 10 of the August 2021 mechanical board exam. At basta, 
magtitiwala ka lang sa mga turo ni Prime. Hanggang malakas pa ako, lagi akong tutulong. Natural lang sa akin ang maging maalagain, kaya ako naging NIC nurse. Tinuro ng tatay ko na tulungan mo yung higit na nangangailangan. 20 years din ako sa abroad, pero umuwi din ako para sa pamilya ko. Mahirap magtrabaho abroad dahil mapalayo ka sa mga mahal mo sa buhay. Kaya I retired early to take care of them. Nung pandemic, nakita ko yung mga senior sa amin na nangailangan ng tulong. Naalala ko na naman yung tatay ko. Para ready akong tubulong lagi, may emergency pouch ako, may biogesic para sa sakit ng ulo, at may Immune Pro at 40D para sa vitamins at supplements. Ay subok na subok sa tagal na nitong ginagamit ng pamilya ko. Binabaon ko pa nga yan nung nasa Saudi ako. Kasi yan ang hiyang sa akin. Kahit ngayon, trusted ko pa rin ito para sa pamilya ko at para sa mga seniors na pamilya ko na rin. Para sa akin, ang alagang Unilab ay alagang di ka bibitawan at di ka pababayaan. Alagang Unilab yan. Mahirap ang madilim. Kaya kung makakatulong tayo magbigyan ng liwanag, bakit hindi? Nung nabalik po namin ang kuryente sa Leyte, nagkailaw lahat pagkatapos ng malakas na bagyo. Sobrang saya ko. Mahirap ang ganitong trabaho. Dapat alaga ka sa katawan mo. Kaya lagi akong may baong Enerbon para may tulong pang palakas. Pag nagkasakit naman, bioflow sa trangkaso. At pag may ubo, Solmux, yan ang inaabot ni nanay lagi. Siya kasi ang nag-aalaga sa akin. Sa kanya ko rin nalaman, mga gamot ng Unilab, sabi niya, maaasaan yun. Iba talaga yung sayang dala ng trabaho namin. Kaya naman, importante sa akin ang aking kalusugan para mas makapagtrabaho pa, para maraming matulungan at mapasaya. Para sa akin, ang alagang Unilab ay alagang may mabibigay ka sa iba. Alagang nagbibigay ng liwanag at saya sa mga tao. Alagang Unilab yan. Kapag atleta ka, team effort talaga yan. Dahil pag may kasama ako, kampante ako.
para manalo, kailangan ko ng tulong ng iba. Bukod sa sumusuporta, meron din nag-aalaga, katulad ng Unilab. Kahit wala pa akong gold medal, pinagkatiwalaan nila ako. Sa sakit ng katawan, nag-aalaksan ko ako. Kung may sipon, use agad. Pag nangangasim ng sipmura, Kremil S ang gamit ko. Hindi madali ang training namin eh. Nagda-doubt ako sa buhat ko, nagda-doubt ako sa sarili ko. Pero kailangan talaga, may dream ka. Ang alagang Unilab. Kasama ko. No, Ngayon nga, nagka-gold na ako. Nagpatayo ako ng gym sa Zamboanga. Nagbigay kami ng oportunidad na makapag-train sila together with me. Lahat ng experience ko as an athlete. Kailangan kong ibahagi sa kanila. Piling ko kasi, kailangan kong i-share ang alagang nakuha ko. Alagang Unilab yan.
Hello, hello everyone. Nako. Rab, may tanong ako sa yo. How have you ever been to France? Of course, we we Monsieur Baguette uh on Poussant, Eiffel Tower croissant. In case you didn't understand any of that, don't worry cuz neither did I. <laughs> well, so bad. So sneak peek for today ay marunong mag-French ang ating speaker for today. Pero kung bala mo pumunta sa France, what you should worry about is what to wear at syempre what better outfit to wear, 'di ba? Syempre none other than your very own shirt from our Peace Merch. Kaya naman check out the comment section or the caption to order your very own Peace Merch shirt. Now, Are you guys excited to learn about what our speaker has in store for you guys today? Well, personally, I am excited to learn French, but more importantly, I'm excited to learn what our speaker has to offer today. But before that, let us introduce ourselves once again. And I am Ram. And I am your host, Gab. And together, we are welcoming everyone to the National Mechanical Engineering Students Convergence 2022 Crank Up Seeing New Perspectives Day 3. This is brought to you by the Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, University of the Philippine Student Unit, and co-presented by Unilab Incorporated in celebration for of this month 2022. Engage, rethinking today, reshaping tomorrow. Yeah, bago natin Hello. ipakilala ang ating speaker disclaimer muna. These are my honest attempts in pronouncing these words. In no way am I trying to butcher the French language. <laughs> Now. Our third speaker is a licensed mechanical engineer who graduated from BS Mechanical Engineering in UP Diliman. He also has a master's degree in biomedical engineering from University de Paris and a master's degree in biomedical engineering with specialization in biomechanics from Ecole Nationale Supérieure des Métiers. He has years of ex- research experience in turning in both art Art M. Métier Paris Sec, Ecole Nationale Superior de M. Métier, and ETH Zurich. And his main field of interest is neuroprosthetics. I think yes. Gab deserves a lot of heart reacts for that. So everyone can give him a round of applause, heart reacts, likes, and all that. So moving on. Our speaker is also currently as a senior research and development engineer at Orthopedic International Incorporated Philippines, and he is here to talk about biomedical engineering and neuroprosthetics. Everybody, send in some heart reacts for engineer Felix Kamagai. And once engineer Kamagai has finished his talk, we will we have a short break before proceeding with our Q and A. So without further ado, send in some heart reacts for engineer Kamagai. Uh, introducing my school, and uh, yeah, that's not the only thing you learn in France. <laughs> but, but but then it was nice. It was nice. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, tonight, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, maybe some of you have seen uh, seen me already or has seen my slides, and I'm here now to talk about biomedical engineering as a field of study and also about neuroprosthetics. Okay, so shall I start? Okay, so for tonight, uh, I'm gonna be discussing you these things. So one, biomedical engineering as a career. So how did I get here, or how how you could get here, and maybe uh, maybe you have a different path, or maybe you have a different liking. So I'm just here to show you what in what's in store. And then uh, my work in Orthopedic International, uh, what it entails to be a medical device manufacturing company. Uh, and then I will introduce you to the field of neuroprosthetics. So what are they? What are they used for? And how do we design them uh, with computational modeling? And then last would be a future outlook on the field of neuroprosthetics and biomedical engineering uh, here in the Philippines. Okay, so to start, uh, I'd like to introduce myself first. So I graduated the uh, Bachelor's of Mechanical Engineering in UP. And then right after I took the board exams, so maybe just like you, uh, you'll take the board exam soon. Uh, and then I started working as a research and development engineer in Orthopedic International. 
So after a year and a half, um, I went to, so from research and development engineering, so that's uh, a department where you uh, convert uh, ideas, concepts into uh, design drawings and design specifications, and then you transfer them to manufacturing. So I was curious as well with manufacturing. So I, I went to the uh, production department and I became a process engineer. And so uh, after being, oh, sorry, uh, let me just let the slides uh, catch up. Okay, so is it good? Can somebody tell me which slide you're on? Ah, okay, okay, about the speaker. Okay, that's good. Okay, so uh, after I worked a couple of years in Orthopedic International, so I wanted to learn more about the, the whole field, no? the whole field of biomedical engineering. And I wanted to specialize um, in, a, in a certain specific field. So I looked for a master's abroad and I found this program, the BME Paris. Uh, so so I, I'm sorry if uh, I went to those schools and I gave you a hard time introducing me. <laughs> but, but then, okay, so I went to Paris uh, for my master's. So I did one and a half uh, years uh, coursework. And then I did six months of um, like an, an internship thesis in ETH Zurich in Switzerland. So that's where uh, I learned about neuroprosthetics. And that's how I, I became uh, more interested in it uh, because they specialize in it. Okay, and so after I did my, my thesis, after I did my master's, um, I went back to the Philippines because uh, I got my scholarship from the DOSD. And so I have to serve my uh, return service agreement. And now I'm working back in Orthopedic International as a senior research and development engineer. Okay, so uh, maybe some of you have already uh, taken classes in biomechanics, and this is one of the most fundamental concepts that you learn. Uh, form follows function. So I'll use this concept to introduce to you what biomedical engineering is, because there are certain aspects of it or some certain branches that um, they are separated, but then they follow certain function, okay? So to define first, what is biomedical engineering? It's the application of engineering principles, practices, and technologies to the fields of medicine and biology, especially in solving problems in healthcare, okay? So to introduce to you some of the branches, so one would be biomaterials or biomat, okay? The second one would be bioengineering innovation and neurosciences. And then you have molecular and cellular biotherapies. You have bioimaging. And then uh, for my specialty, this, uh, we have biomechanics. And so uh, these um, aspects or different fields, actually they don't just go solo all the time. And another key concept there is integration is key. So these subfields actually they intertwine with each other so that you could have um, more, uh, your problem solving would be more specialized. So for example, you can uh, combine biomechanics and biomaterials to solve problems in, uh, with arthritis, amputations, and scoliosis, etc., You can combine biomechanics uh, with bioimaging so that uh, you can do, um, you can assess bone and tissue damage uh, with um, imaging uh, devices. You can do injury prevention and cancer detection. You can combine biomechanics with neuroscience so that you can solve problems uh, like Parkinson's, stroke, and tetraplegia. But then for my line of work right now, uh, I'm, go I'm going to go back to the arthritis, amputations, and scoliosis. 
because uh, that's uh, where I'd like to focus in. So um, my next slide actually is now going back here to the Philippines in Orthopedic International. Okay, so what is Orthopedic International or OII? So it's the first and only orthopedic implant manufacturing company in the Philippines. And uh, it was founded by Dr. Ramon Gustilo. Uh, he's a Filipino. Um, well, he's a world-renowned Filipino neurosurgeon, and he practiced in the States uh, uh, for quite some time. And now he's back here in the Philippines, and uh, he started OII to give back to the Filipino people. And then our president, uh, Mr. Jude Passing, uh, he founded the. Uh, he also founded the research and development department with Dr. Gustilo, and both of them uh, they began developing the knee, hip, spine, nail, and wrist fracture implants and instruments. So as you can see here, we have um, our flagship product. This is the Axis Knee System. So this is a knee replacement system, and you use it. Um, when you're old, when your joints are uh, very thin already. Uh, and these are for patients who are osteoarthritic. And um, here you can see the whole bedding surface is replaced by metal and plastic. Okay. Um, so this is the axis knee. And then next one, here's the stratus fortis percutaneous pedicle screw system. So this is a fixation system that you put on the back. So you, you uh, install screws and you install rods. And uh, you, the, this is used for um, diseases like spondylolisthesis um, or, or tumors or scoliosis and et cetera. Okay. And then next we have this Cobra uh, distal radius fixator. This is a fixation device for uh, wrist injuries. And then next we have this, um, the nailing, right? The, uh, we have this intramedullary nail uh, that is used, for example, for long bone fractures. Um, I'm sure you've heard about motorcycle accidents or basketball accidents where uh, the players, um, tibia or femur uh, become fractured. And so they put, this, uh, they put this rod here. So this is usually made of titanium and it, uh, it fixes the fractured long bone, okay? And then our last product is the prime cemented hip system. So this prime cemented hip system, uh, this is a hip replacement system. So just like our axis knee, it's used for, uh, for replacing the joint. So the same as the axis knee, this is for arthritic patients. And also this could be used for people who, um, who have been in accidents. So for, for trauma uh, and uh, their, their hip becomes uh, broken and uh, we replaced their hip using this hip system. So my first project, actually, my, my first um, solo project in OII uh, involved the hip. So I, I designed this mechanical cup positioner. It's a design, uh, it's a device that lessens the um, implant failure uh, with reduced X-ray exposure. So uh, this, the objective of this project is to make um, the whole surgery safer and uh, more effective both to the doctors and to the patients. So, okay. Yeah, so that's uh, just a short overview of what uh, I did for my project. Okay, so, um, so I started in 2016 in OII. I started with the spine system. So from the regular uh, stratus fortis um, spinal fixation, because usually uh, when you do spinal fixation, you open up the whole back. Like if you can see uh, maybe from, from 
from the butcher shop, you could see the whole back of the pig, something like that. No, uh, and it's 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 usual, it's common in surgery. So that, that was the the old system before, like the old procedure. Uh, and then eventually, uh, minimally invasive medical devices started coming to the market. So we also developed our own uh, minimally invasive spine system. So instead of opening the whole back, we can now just uh, puncture holes. And uh, with those holes, we, we insert the rods and we insert the pedicle screws. Sorry, we insert the screws to the bones. Okay? So that's one, and I was a member of that project. And then next would be in 2017, I did the hip cup positioner system. So as I've explained to you before, and then actually in between this one, I, I, I went abroad and then I did my master's. So as soon as I came back, I became part of a new system to, this is a targeting system uh, for the intramedullary nail. So as I've mentioned to you before, this nail uh, gets implanted inside your canal in the long bone. So um, actually the most difficult part of it is installing the screws because since the long bone is inside you, then it's kind of, you're like working blind there. So you can see where the holes are, where the screw holes are. And usually, um, Doctors uh, use X-rays or C arms or image intensifiers, uh, but that takes a long time. So we're developing this uh, new device to target it uh, much faster and much safer. Okay. And then uh, for my current project right now, uh, I'm proud to say that this is uh, DOST. It, this is in collaboration with the DOST. So uh, we're developing a cementless hip system. So this is um, serves as the same function as the PCHS uh, um, cemented hip system, but this one uh, is uh, cementless and cementless hip systems have their own benefits. And maybe some of you have heard that um, for some people, they actually prefer titanium uh, hip replacements compared to like the old cobalt chrome hip replacements. But anyway, uh, it, it's like a big debate and maybe we should reserve it for a different uh, different occasion. So yeah, um, that's uh, my projects uh, since I entered OII. And then here, I'm going to introduce to you how we start our um, project design. So when you become a biomedical engineer, uh, of course, well, what you'll be expecting is that you're going to be producing products, new products, okay? And that's where OII uh, comes in, okay? So we start with device design. So during device design, uh, the design inputs don't just come from us. We don't uh, just uh, find problems randomly. So what we do is uh, we have consultant doctors. So we talk with these doctors so that we would know uh, what their problems are. So I mean, what the patient's problems are, okay? And then we would go in depth and we would go deeper and find, um, find the solutions to those problems find solutions to those problems, okay? So as soon as we found step-by-step -step those solutions, we now proceed to manufacturing. Uh, and I'm kind of proud to say that our manufacturing plant in Kabuya uh, serves world-class quality manufacturing. So we have um, CNC machines and uh, we could do several uh, types of finish on, on uh, the orthopedic implants. And I could say that our products are at par with other devices from abroad. Okay. And then after you, manufacture it, after you manufacture it, so from device design, you make your product. And then how do you sell your product? First, you need to go through regulatory approval. So regulate, this is kind of like the uh, like 
if you're going to spend time on a project, you will take a long time on preparing uh, regulatory approval documents. So this regulatory um, bodies, so like the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration, uh, they they're there to control uh, the kind of uh, the kinds of products that come into the market. So what we have to do is we have to adhere to them. We have to um, make sure that our products are, are good, they're traceable, and they won't bring any harm to the patient. So as soon as um, we have submitted those documents, we have submitted those, um, the approvals are okay, then we can start um, selling our product. And then as soon as we can sell our product, then we could attend to our patients. So from the doctors to the engineers, and then now we have our satisfied patients. So we don't just stop there. Uh, we, we continue to improve our designs. We continue to improve um, our systems. That's why we have what we call a post-production monitoring. So we monitor our products after we produce them. And so we get feedback, we get um, customer complaints, we, uh, if there are any, um, and then we improve our products from there, okay? So then we go uh, back to square one, <laughs> and then it just goes around, okay? And then added to that, we also educate the public. So as you can see, uh, maybe from all the other speakers here, uh, mine is a bit um, different. It's kind of new. So it, it is our responsibility to educate the public about biomedical engineering and medical devices so that more engineers would be uh, more interested you know, uh, in, in going into this field. And also, eventually, if there are more engineers uh, who, do, who are in this field, then we could do better products and then we could... Um, uh, better products and also better healthcare for our patients. Okay, so that's it for um, for my uh, path in OII. So I'm going to introduce to you now uh, what neuroprosthetics are. So maybe let's try to slow down. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a chance to breathe. Okay, so the. I uh, maybe some of you are new to this. So neuroprosthetics, what are they? Uh, I'm sure you've heard about the word prosthetics that they, and these prosthetics usually are artificial hands and legs. No, but the definition actually of prosthetics is a device that, that can be uh, used to augment or bring back um, your body. To, the, to its original condition. So first, neuroprosthetics counter the effects of neurodegeneration and restores the human condition. So neuro and prosthetics, so we've tackled prosthetics, what about neuro? So this is about the nervous system. And in the nervous system, this includes the brain and everything down, okay? And all the nerves going down to your body. Okay, so, um, so neurodegeneration means that uh, as you grow old, your nerves de um, degenerate or they become damaged uh, because, uh, you know, because the body, uh, as the body grows old, um, our body as well um, becomes much weaker, okay? And uh, neuroprosthetics, they are uh, precise medical devices that interact with nerve activity through electrical stimulation. So uh, actually the nerves, our nerves work like a big wiring system, okay? And the way we transfer information from our brain to our body and from our body to our brain is through electrical stimulation. So it's, uh, it's like a, it's like your body is just full of tiny wires. And the way to get in between these um, cables is to have a neuroprosthetic. And as you can see here, this is your target nerve. OK, 
Okay, this uh, for example, okay, this is a target nerve, and you have a neuroprosthetic here. Okay, so this um, interface that goes near your target nerve is called the electrode. And this electrode is the one that sends electrical signals to your nerve uh, to perform uh, whichever function you want it to perform. So basically, it's, um, it's a stimulant, okay? And it sends um, electric signals to your nerve. And these uh, kinds of electrodes, uh, these neuroprosthetics, uh, they've been here for quite some time now. And so uh, different kinds of neuroprosthetics have been produced already. So you have cuff electrodes, you have time electrodes, you have UCA electrodes, and you have life electrodes. And they have different configurations, so like a cuff. It goes around the, um, the bundle of nerve. The time, it's a transverse intrafascicular um, electrode so it goes through through your nerve you know? so and so on and so forth okay so just a short background on the nervous system so it starts with your brain okay with the central nervous system and then it goes down to your peripheral nervous system okay and your peripheral nervous system is divided into two uh, they are the sensory division the afferent so uh, this goes, um, the signal goes from your uh, body to the brain. It goes up, so afferent, and then the motor division. It's the efferent, so for, it's from the brain to your body. And I'll, I'll explain later how these two pathways could interact and how they are equally important in maintaining our body. Okay, so... This one, the first one, the cochlear neuroprosthesis. Okay, um, this is for loss of hearing, and this is the most widely accepted device in the market, even here in the Philippines. So this device is in an afferent device, so uh, it's it it sends signals back to your brain. Okay, um, maybe uh, you've heard of some people who have. Um, ear implants or like because uh, it's ano na eh, um may mga atao dito yung hearing aid yeah yung normal hearing aid it functions as like a microphone and a speaker inside your ear okay but this one if you if they tell you that it's an implant a hearing aid implant then they're talking about a cochlear neuroprosthetic okay so this uh device uh, is implanted near your auditory nerve, okay? So a microphone uh, from external device receives the signal, it processes and transmits it to an internal device through radio. So this whole thing here, this internal receiver back to your cochlea uh, is the one that's implanted, okay? And this sends signals from your microphone uh, the sound signals, uh, they, get, uh, they get encoded here, and then they send signals to your cochlea and then to your brain. So that's how you're able to um, hear the, uh, the sounds that come from the microphone. Then next, this one, a sacral neuroprosthesis. So where is the sac sacrum? Okay, so this area, okay, so this, this bone here is the sacrum. And a sacral neuroprosthesis is implanted anywhere here in this area. And it's used for bladder control, bowel control, or sexual dysfunction. Uh, as, um, as sensitive as it may seem, actually, uh, amputees prefer, sometimes uh, amputees prefer to have their uh, sexual um, capabilities be uh, fixed first as compared to their uh, walking ability. That is a fact. <laughs> That's why uh, companies have been producing this uh, sacral neuroprosthesis for quite some time because of how important it is to our patients. Okay? So the device is implanted near the sacral nerve or the pudendal nerve. So it's somewhere here. Okay. And if you can see, there's a video here. OK, 
Okay, so there's your stimulator. Then there's your lead wire. And then your electrode sends uh, these signals okay, to your nerves uh, to, uh, so that you could uh, control your bowel or your bladder and also those um, sexual functions that we, we talked about. Okay, so next. Okay, vagal neuroprosthesis. So this, uh, this is a neuroprosthetic device that is implanted in your uh, vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is um, it's very important. Uh, it's one of the uh, cranial nerves. And this vagus nerve innervates the heart, the stomach, and other important internal organs. And since it innervates uh, so much, uh, so many internal organs, um, it's quite difficult to implant it, but the, uh, the benefits would outweigh the risks. And so uh, vagus nerve uh, prosthesis are made. Okay, so uh, vagal neuroprosthesis um, answer depression, epilepsy, and pain. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if there is any vague... Uh, vagus nerve neuroprosthesis uh, here in the Philippines, but this is quite big uh, abroad. Okay, so here, um, arm and leg neuroprosthesis. Okay, so arm and leg neuroprosthetic devices provide motor function and sensory feedback to artificial arms and legs. So they have two pathways, so they uh, you could implant them to the median or, or the ulnar nerve in the arm or the sciatic nerve in the leg. So as you can see here, okay, you have this patient, his eyes closed, okay, and he would send motor commands to his robotic arm, okay? And then uh, as soon as he sends commands to his robotic arm, he could, uh, he has sensors here and those sensors would send information back in a sensory loop to his um, uh, to his brain, so that he could do finer motor control. Okay, and uh, this is very important because we we don't just think about moving our hand; we think about grabbing something. We think about touching something. We think about um, uh, getting something that is small, something that is soft, and you you don't need uh, you don't just need the information from the brain to your extremities, but more importantly, you need the information from your extremities to your brain. Okay, and uh, this is a video that would show the importance of the uh, the brain input. So. An ICMS or an intracortical microstimulator was implanted in a tetraplegic patient. Okay, and uh, this tetraplegic uh, patient has these artificial arms attached to his brain, and also there's a sensory feedback that goes from the hand to his brain. Okay, and as you can see in the video, with ICMS feedback. Um, he can perform this ARA test uh, much faster than without the feedback. You see, <laughs> see how long the difference is? Okay, so now that is for the hand. And I've been given the opportunity to see this one up close, this one for the leg. So this is called the Sensars My Leg. This is uh, an actual product already. And if you could see the video. So an amputee with a prosthetic leg is implanted with sensors underneath his foot. 
and the information that comes from the foot is sent back to his leg via a neuroprosthetic device, okay? And those, uh, those signals that get sent to his uh, nerves are sent back to his brain. And so he could walk normally after receiving that, uh, that feedback. Okay? And um, this, uh, this product was developed in ETH Zurich. Uh, and I had the uh, opportunity to see, see this up close when I did my thesis in the neuroengineering lab in ETH Zurich. So this is uh, my lab and, and this is me. Uh, and ETH is in Switzerland. So fun fact, uh, ETH Zurich is the school where Einstein graduated, okay? Before Princeton, okay? <laughs> Just to clarify, okay. So, okay, so electrical nerve stimulation. So this stimulation reintroduces our brain into the loop Thus, in the, it, thus, it improves the quality uh, of life of our PWDs. So the idea here is that you have uh, different kinds of nerves, the vagus, the median, or the sciatic, etc. And you select these nerves and you implant these electrodes. But then how do we know if these electrodes are good? Okay, so what we do is uh, we do a hybrid modeling framework where we combine uh, real life histological data and electro design, and we combine them with a hybrid model. So this is, uh, these are mathematical models. Um, to, and once we combine them, we decide what, opti uh, what is the optimal electro design, what are good surgical implant indications, and what would be an optimal stimulation policy. Okay. And this would tell us if we get the fibers or our nerves recruited or not. So when you say recruited, uh, it means that our signals um, would get passed on from your peripheral nerve back to, you, to the brain, okay? So because it's not automatic. Eh? Um, when you strike something with an electric signal, it doesn't mean that it goes uh, the whole way to the brain but then you, you, we have to know whether it's recruited or not. Okay? And then that's how we know if our implants or our uh, neuroprosthetic devices are effective or not. And we measure their effectivity with two measures. Uh, one is recruitability, and then the second one is selectivity. So this is just a short background. No? So um, the recruitability is the percent of fibers we recruit in a target nerve with a given charge. Because um, as, uh, as the charges increase, no, uh, the affected areas would increase as well. But this one is just in ideal situations. And um, in reality, uh, our nerves have different diameters of fibers. And if you think about electricity or wires, different wires have different resistances. So they don't automatically follow this, this kind of spread, okay? So we also have this other measure called selectivity where uh, we just want to target specific nerves and not other neighboring nerves because uh, a, a specific nerve can serve a certain function. And uh, if, we, if we stimulate a different nerve, then we are recruiting different functions already, okay? So, uh, just to show you, uh, so as I've said, no, uh, nerves have different diameters, and these diameters uh, would uh, would affect the passing of information. Okay, and this inform the passing of this information uh, would need to be um, uh, passed on using this all or nothing action potential. And this all, all, all or nothing action potential is the one that, uh, that allows the signal to go from your periphery into the brain or to your brain, to your periphery, okay? Okay, so we just did was we, um, we made 3D models uh, using console and SOLIDWORKS. We used MATLAB to model them in uh, using the MATLAB environment. And then we did uh, FEM using console for the stimulation. 
And then we computed for thresholds using a, a software called Neuron. These are all mathematical um, softwares and we managed everything through MATLAB, okay? So maybe uh, it's getting a bit deeper now, no? but then uh, I'll just summarize it using this slide. So these uh, throughout the years, so from 1968 or 1976, uh, these seminal papers started emerging uh, on neuroprosthetic research. And uh, as time went by, companies started uh, emerging as well. And uh, so with, with better information, and now we have companies um, uh, emerging from, from this information, our, uh, our types of electrodes as well uh, have, been, uh, have been emerging. So this computational modeling framework, this computational modeling uh, really gives, uh, gives way to producing these, um, these neuroprosthetic devices. And also when it comes to regulatory approval, uh, as I've mentioned before, um, computational modeling speeds up the FDA approval. So ultimately, we bridge the gap between research and translation. Okay. okay, so how will it be relevant to the Philippines? So in terms of, uh, okay, in epilepsy, uh, it's one of the top 50 causes of death in the Philippines and around 900,000 pe people have epilepsy, okay? Also 3.3 million people suffer from depression and suicide cases reached more than 2,500 back in 2012. So um, we need to develop a uh, vagus nerve stimulation devices here. Okay, so that we could um, uh, cater to these uh, patients who need these neuroprosthetic devices. Okay. And then next, uh, millions of Filipino amputees are in need of better artificial prosthesis. Uh, yeah, actually, right now, you know, we, have, uh, we have companies already making good uh, prosthetic devices, but majority uh, of Filipinos still have the basic um, ba basic prosthetic arms and legs. So we, we need to improve those, okay? And the way to improve those is to connect them to a neuroprosthetic device. And that's where we need to focus uh, on their development, okay? So buti naman, no? Meron tayong ganito. Uh, we have the NURA or the National Unified Health Research uh, Agenda, which focuses on, um, uh, this is uh, by the DOSD, PCHRD, uh, and they focus on uh, health research for, uh, for producing these medical devices. So they focus on mental health, they focus on biomedical products and engineering and for disability, okay? And also, I'd like to say thank you to DLSU IBET because uh, this lab, this um, the IBET, the Institute for Biomedical and Engineering Health Technologies, have been prioritizing um, biomedical device research here in the Philippines in the academic setting. Okay, and uh, I'd like to say thank you to them as well because they helped me get my uh, my scholarship abroad, and I am in constant coordination with them for their projects. Okay, so for my take home message, okay, so PME is an emerging field, okay, uh, to start a career in it will be challenging, but very rewarding. So there will be patients who will be needing our help in the future, okay. The neuroprosthetics is, exist in the market already, but we should promote them to make them more accessible. And lastly, BME is included in government priority fields but then it needs to be supported and we need to get in there so that uh, we could expand the field better, okay? So thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, then I uh, will transition to our Q&A portion next.
Oh, that's a great talk. Thank you, Engineer Kamagai. And honestly, I really hope that one day that more Fili- more schools in the Philippines do teach stuff like this so that we don't have to go like abroad to have to learn about, you know, prosthetics, biomechanics. Like, I want my own robot arm one day. But, you know, <laughs> what do you think? Okay. Um, it started there, actually. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. It's like, you know, I saw some of the questions that we have in the team. There are so many. There are so many. But that's it. Before that, siguro, no, ayan, we are sure that everyone has tons of burning questions, as we said, for Engineer Kamagai. So make sure to use our Menti. So just like last time, you just have to go to menti.com and type in the code 41150522 to ask your questions. But before we proceed, we would like to once again thank our sponsors and partners. So we'll see you in a bit. Enemy SC 2022 is presented to you by Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, University of the Philippines Student Unit. Co-presented by Prime Mechanical Engineering Review Center. Zion Studios PH. Brought to you by Davies Paint Philippines Incorporated. Our media partners, Spark Up. Our community partners, Bataan Peninsula State University Society of Mechanical Engineering Students, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Cavite Chapter, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Darasal University Dasmarinas. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Midlo Union Campus Student Unit. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Emilio Aguinaldo College, Cavite. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Maragondon Branch. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Alfonso Campos. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, USTP Chapter. Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Xavier University Chapter. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Technological Institute of the Philippines Student Unit, Manila. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Technological University of the Philippines Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Camarines Norte State College Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Coleo de Mutinlupa Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Bicol University Student Unit. Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Lyceum of the Philippines University, Cavite Student Chapter. 
Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers National University Student Unit Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila Student Unit Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Pangasinan State University Student Unit Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers PUP Student Unit Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Sursagon State University Student Unit Sursagon Chapter Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers Tarlac State University Student Chapter Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers University of Batangas Student Chapter UP Geodetic Engineering Club And a special thanks to UP Mining Metallurgical and Materials Engineering Association Incorporation. All right, and we're back. So, and I look forward to asking all these questions. And it looks like our audience has a lot of very interesting ones. So, I think we just go on straight to our first question. Okay, so, sir, do these implants you mentioned have batteries? And if yes, how do they work or how do they charge? Okay, so, yes, uh, these implants have batteries. So, ngayon, uh, they're very advanced now. So, and then also you can do wireless charging. So, um, so yeah, and uh, if you can remember in some of my slides, we have a stimulator which is uh, way far from from your electrode, and those stimulators are actually implanted very near the skin or very near a place where it's easy to access in case you need to go uh, to go to go do surgery again. So yeah, that's why um, it's it has a very long cable. It, it's uh, near the skin. And uh, you can do wireless charging, etc. But, but then for the old systems, you'd have to uh, do surgery again. Uh, yun lang, medyo hassle. But uh, yeah, but at least advanced na yun. Thank you, sir. Uh, itong next question natin is, I guess, <laughs> di naman siguro uh, uh, diagnosis. More of an advice. Pero question is, can cochlear Neuroprosthetics be used for someone like me that is diagnosed with moderate senso, sensory neural hearing loss and have tinnitus symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh I wow. To know about. Okay. Um. Uh, so how are you dealing with it in uh in school? So yeah, sense you have if you have sensory neural hearing loss, then you should uh, probably explore it as an option. Okay. So I'm assuming Siguro right now you just have those um, hearing aids that act like speakers, microphones and speakers inside your ear. Uh, then probably you, you need to explore um, this uh, uh, cochlear implant already. Hey, thank you for that, sir. So next question. Oh, this is a bit of an interesting one, sir. So, sir, do you have any tips for engineering students who want to get a master's in Europe or abroad. So I guess they're asking for advice on how they would mm -hmm. approach this. Okay, so my number one advice would be just apply, okay? <laughs> regardless of your grades, regardless of your school, regardless of your um, affiliations, just apply, okay? Because I myself am not a stellar student and the only thing I have was my interest, okay? So as, as long as you have that interest in you, just apply, do uh, do the paperwork, um, talk to talk to the people around you, talk to the professors there, and as soon as they can see your uh, your interest, then they will accept you. Although th there will be rejections in a month, no? But just apply. Oh. In love, <laughs> talaga. Thank you, sir. I'm not a stellar student, then, sir. So there's no problem <laughs> <Yeah>. yet. <laughs> <laughs> And thank okay. you, sir. Uh, our next question is, I'm interested in taking biomedical engineering in the future. 
how much bio knowledge do I need to know to get in? Would you say it's better to be from an engineering background and then take bio classes or be from a biology biology background and take some engineering class? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, this is a good question. So it depends. Um, pero it's a plus. No, yung if you take bio classes or ana, yun, yeah, yung anatomy, physiology, um, it, it's a plus, no, pero it's not a real requirement. So yung program ko, actually, uh, the first year, it's an integration period. So in the program, in the BME Paris program, um, they accepted students from different backgrounds. So I have classmates who are um, engineers, so ME. We have electrical engineers. And then we have physical therapists. <laughs> and then we have a doctor. Then, so, yung ganun, no? And since ang biomedical engineering kasi talaga, uh, ang focus mo is yung end, point, yung end goal mo, which is to solve a medical problem. And that medical problem uh, requires uh, knowledge from many, many fields. So, if you're a mechanical engineer right now, don't worry about it because if you find a program that could, you know, um, give you the fundamentals of biomedical engineering as soon as you go into masters then then that's good just just go do it no? uh, but don't be afraid that you don't know anything uh, you don't have any bio knowledge because eventually you'll learn it along the way okay thank you so much for that sir so anyone can do it but uh yeah. so on to our next question so this is actually in relation to one of our previous um, topics so, sir, do you have any experience working with 3D printed neuroprosthetics and what is it like? Oh, actually, no, no, no experience yet. No, no, ilang, no experience. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but I, I'd like to have experience with 3D printed neuroprosthetics. So, yung, ha, sobrang, yung flexibility kasi ng 3D printing. And yeah, yeah, one interesting ato. Yeah, I should explore it. Okay, so looking forward to that later on. So, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, for our next question, ito, how were you able to do your thesis in ETH Zurich and how hard is it for a Filipino engineer to get to ETH? Ah, uh, okay. So, ito rin lang ito, no? I just applied. <laughs> the joke. Um, okay, so... Uh, I attended this summer school. So a year before I did my thesis, so I attended this summer school about neuroprosthetics. And then right after I got in touch with the professors uh, there in ETH. So I got in touch with the lab and um, kind of like I applied directly to, to, to the lab. You know? So if you're going to do a thesis, and you're already in a different master's program, that's how it will usually go. But if you're going to um, apply for a whole master's program, then you would need to go through the master's application uh, process. Is it hard for a Filipino engineer to get into ETH? Honestly, uh, which is also good no, about um, Europe and also abroad, is that they don't care about where you come from. They just care about what you're willing to offer and what, what you're able to do. Yun lang talaga. Walang bias, walang uh, ni, ni, hindi nga sila racist or anything towards me. No? And sobrang okay silang, ka, ano, okay silang kasama sa ano, uh, everyday life. And then. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's not be scared. Let's just all apply as Sir said earlier. So thank you for that. <laughs> And this is our next question, a bit of a more personal one. So, what made you decide that? What made you decide that you wanted to take this field specifically, sir? Ah, okay. So this started back in college. Uh, I was a I was an athlete, so I did hammer throw. Uh, I was part of the UP track and field team, and you know, usually athletes they get into injuries, and since I was already me. Uh, and then while I was having my injuries, I, I got to talking with, uh, I got to talk with the physical therapists and some, and other students from, 
uh, from CHK, things like that. And then mm. maybe, maybe I could combine my engineering knowledge with uh, medicine or therapy. So, <clears throat> so I, I look for, uh, like try to research on my own. Parang, okay, what, what opportunities could be there for me? And then fortunately, uh, Dr. Publico, uh, may, maybe some of you uh, have taken his classes already. Then uh, he has this ME197 uh, biomechanics. And, and so I took it and then got really interested, which is really nice. You know? And then a semester after that, um, the, our president of OII, Sir Jude Sasking, Nagturo din siya part time sa UP and he taught ME 155. Uh, so I did my 155. Sorry, this is the old curriculum. Right? So I did my 155 with him. Uh, and then I just discovered that he's the president of OII. And so as soon as I graduated, <laughs> I applied kagad. <laughs> so, you know, parang mm. step by step, you, you don't really have to be in a specific. Um, in your specific interest field immediately, you know, but you could do step by step as long as the opportunities are there. Just take them, you know, until you then you'll discover what you want, and then you'll discover uh, the other pathways leading to uh, where you could go. Then yeah, get it done. Baby steps, talaga. Okay, thanks, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and next question for Nathan is. How many schools did you apply to so related to sa kanina? And did you apply in other countries? Ah, okay. Ito medyo, ano lang. Um, so, how many schools? Not sure. <laughs> okay. Pero, yung, did you apply in any uh, in other countries? So, my answer to this is that I only applied in France. Uh, and I, I actually applied as well. In... Okay, sorry. So I applied in France because that's where the scholarships are. Uh, there's this Phil France scholarship. They have this Eiffel scholarship. Uh, and then so given the opportunity, then saka ako nag-apply. So tulad nung dun sa, ano, no, dun sa pagpasok ko sa OII, the opportunity was there. So I, I needed to take it because otherwise uh, I couldn't find any other place to go. Parang ganun eh. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to find another opportunity. So, I, I looked for the opportunity and then I applied. So, ayan. Okay. We could have gotten Sir yeah. Kamagay with <laughs> different, ano, different language. Oh, uh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh Spanish. Uh, so, like, so like really the country didn't have anything to do with it. It's like oh the it had good uh, opportunities to take it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I applied in Pala, no? Melbourne, Australia. Oh. Yeah. But I wasn't able to go there. <laughs> and there's us who like want to go Japan for anime or something. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to next question. All right, sir, have you ever considered making prosthetics that do more than just replace the missing part, but actually mm-hmm. upgrade the function, like tools or anything like that? Yeah. So, uh, this is quite controversial, no? But of course, I mean, as an engineer, you, you would want, you know, stuff to upgrade. Uh, but then you have to go back to where the need is. So when you enter the field of biomedical engineering, then you start solving problems. You really have to go back where there's a need. And the need right now is for you know, older people to bring them back to, you know, to, to their original condition or for amputees, bring them back to their original condition. And so, dun palang ubus na oras mo <laughs> But then, of course, we, we can always say na of course, we would want these uh, upgrade or like the sci-fi stuff. You know? But yeah, yeah, you have to go back to your uh, main objective. Sir? Feeling ko marami sa ating viewers ang naghahangad ng ganyan. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Iron Man, eh? Ayan, related siguro cyborg, sa, ating cyborg. Previous, mm-hmm. uh, sa ating previous questions. Would it be possible to have prosthetics that can heal in the future? Or like, uh, is yes. it still under Ooh. biomedical engineering? Yes, oh, oh, oh. feel as in touch, no? Tama ba? Oh. Yes. So, yun nga, no? yung... 
yung ginagawa nila sa ETH Zurich. Uh, if you could also look into uh, Chalmers University, MIT, um, University of Pittsburgh. There, there. Yun yung mga uh, schools na nagpo-focus on these neuroprosthetics that can feel. Okay? And yun yung sensors na my leg. Uh, I know it's already in the market. Eh. So, yeah. It, it's there already. Also, so I'm assuming that like includes stuff like pain or any discomforts. Mm. No? Mm, 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 mm. Oh my. So, yeah. Oh. Okay. So, kumbaga... Yun nga, no? feel kapag na prick ka, that would that should feel uh, there's ouch. pain. Ouch. <laughs> no, ouch. Ouch. Feel, ouch. <laughs> Forgot the term, okay. Right. Okay, for the lack of the term, but uh, yeah, dapat ganun, no? And kunyari, um, cold, hot, those sensations. Uh, it's still undergoing research. Ah, you could also look into EPFL. Uh, it's the Ecole Polytechnique uh, Federal de Lausanne. It's also in Switzerland. So, yeah, they're, they're focusing on the um, cold, hot sensations. Yay. Cool. Oh, thank you so much. That's pretty cool. But, like, that'd be pretty scary, though, like, if you get something really hard. Okay, anyways, that's really exciting. <laughs> I mean, that's normal. Hey, on to our next question. Aside from research and development, what are other tracks that a biomechanical engineer can take? Mm, okay. Mm, so recently, kailan ba to? April, uh, I did a talk sa um, ISF. Uh, it's a society of ECE students. And uh, they're very interested in um, biomedical engineering as well. And um, to my knowledge, what their graduates do, uh, they they become um, technicians for uh, imaging devices. So aside from research and development, you could also go into the industry immediately or go into more technical um, uh, positions in, in hospitals or uh, yeah, yung mga, mga ganun usually. So, kung saan may product, then most probably saka ka may need for a biomedical engineer. So, yun. Mostly lang talaga dito in the Philippines since we don't have that much products yet. It, uh, biomedical engineers are still in the research and development area. Sana in the future, we have more opportunities. Agreed, for agreed. our biomedical engineers. Yeah. For our next question, do you often deal with skeptical patients who do not approve of using your project? And if so, how do you deal with those cases? Ah, yeah, especially with OII. Um, huh, we, we, we just let the doctors deal with it. The joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have to, first you have to believe in your product. Um, uh, you have to be to believe that this is uh, this this material these materials are good uh, you have to know uh, what are the benefits of your product as compared to other products um, yeah just w- what good does it bring to your patient so usually naman if they're skeptical uh inisip lang nila nako i might get an, an infection from it Nako, it might fail eventually. Nako, um, baka it's uh, not my money's worth. Y- yung mga ganong bagay. Pero as soon as you explain to them uh, that this, these are engineered, these are um, FDA approved, uh, these are um, very high quality, um, your, I mean, your, your materials, uh, they are in a certain degree of biocompatibility and such. Then eventually, you know, they'll come around and then, okay, yeah, everything's good. Okay, okay. So, sir, this one's a little bit uh, interesting. This like a follow-up to the question I asked earlier. <laughs> so, hope you, okay. So, if a human can have two arms and if loss can be replaced, that's what we've been talking about earlier. Okay. Can we add something like a third <clears throat> arm or any other parts that can help? So, I think he's asking, like, 
you can go beyond what you have. Like, you know how they're like drones, mm. like, there's stuff you can control your mind nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's the question. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's cool, no? Uh, what I could say there is that if you're going to control something, then you would need uh, to control it with something you already have. So, for example, if you have a drone that you can control with, uh, I haven't seen actually. I haven't seen in depth those drones that you could control with your mind, no. But I'm thinking um, you're using uh, either EEG or um, EMG to to control those drones. But then to give out those signals, uh, you need you need to divide your attention. First, you need to divide your attention. Then you need to divide your resources. So for example, EMG, you need an extra, you need your muscles to, to control it. So um, you can theoretically add, uh, add an appendage to you like, uh, like Doc Ock, but then uh, you would need some time to, uh, to control it, to learn to control it. You will need some time to, you know, treat it as an extra appendage. So possible, possible, possible. Anyway, it would just be very difficult. Uh, so sir, yeah. like para it to be limited to what your brain is kind of oh, capable okay. with. And, uh, oh, cause, like, so what um, about like, sir, like, you know, like dinosaurs had like their second brain or something. Like, would that be possible then? Like you add some sort of second brain to help control those parts. If ever. Ah, I haven't heard of that yet. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. All right. So that's a fun question. Then. Oh. <laughs> Even I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Maraming, maraming naghahangad talaga na Yeah, actually. <laughs> upgrades, people. Upgrades. All right. Superhero. Yeah, I like go. this next question. <laughs> And for our next question, how are these technologies accessible to the less fortunate? I think it may be worth a fortune to avail of these services. Yes, yes. Uh, harshly, <laughs> yan yung katotohanan na kailangan natin harapin. Uh, kaya firstly, sinasabi ko rin na kailangan natin i-promote dito so that we have more products. And with more products, then... Um, we can produce them better in a faster, more, um, in a cheaper way. Not cheap na masama, pero in a, a affordable way. Okay. Uh, and also, um, you have to look for um, companies that are government funded. So like OII, uh, partly it's uh, funded by the DOSD. So we try our best to make our products affordable. Um, and uh, after, yun yan, no? so just an example. So we have uh, our knee system that would range, ano lang, theoretical though. If our knee system would range um, only 100,000 pesos, um, foreign implants would charge you half a million to a million pesos. Okay. So, yun. So, medyo thankful ako na I'm working in a in a Filipino company that caters to uh, to the Filipinos and we try our best to make our products affordable so that these people who are less fortunate would be able to access these implants. Okay? Um, you could also look into uh, other companies that are in uh, that are um, nakatay up with PCHRD, so that's the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development. Right? So that's a branch of DOSD as well. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that's one way you know, to make the, these accessible. Very common problem okay. talaga siya with developing mga yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day we have access to like more high-tech, 3D printed parts, yeah. maybe, maybe. Uh, diba? But even yeah. for a student uh, yeah. with a 3D printer, it's so mm-hmm. oh. Okay, so this next one's pretty interesting because as you know, nature is one of the world's best architects. So are there any research in biomedics where prosthetics are based on animal features? Ah, 
Yeah. Um, I think there are, although I haven't explored it, but yeah, there are for animals. Because mm-hmm. mostly our research before we bring them to humans, uh, we we have to go through the process of um, animal models. Okay. So, eh, yung, ano to, ah, parang ito talaga yung path for medical device development. Okay. So, before uh, putting something on a human, you have to find a an animal model. So, the, an animal. Okay. And, and then you just have to make sure that the animal, uh, the features that that animal has uh, would be applicable for for a human. But anyway, uh, if it's possible now for humans, then I, I would say na, uh, for animal features, then it would be most uh, most probable. Oh my God. So like, sir, um, when you say close to humans, are you talking like apes or like humans? Yes. Smaller. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we call them ano, non-human primates. Because uh, okay. we are primates, essentially. Then okay, that's fair. They are non-human. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you so much for that, sir. All right. Yeah, and for, uh, we only have uh, time for one last question. And our last uh, question is, where do you see the biomechanical engineering and neuroprosthetics industry in the Philippines 10 years from now? Ah okay. This is good, no? Because I can see that it's evolving really fast. You know, since information is really fast right now, um, and then the government is also supporting this. So I would say, uh, medical device manufacturers would double, probably more than uh than right now. So yeah, in ten years. I, I guess. I hope. I hope. <laughs> yeah. And, and I hope then uh, maging ano, yung, uh, the problems that we have, like the common problems, sicknesses, diseases that we have uh, would be uh, we, we should have something at least to solve those problems already in 10 years. Yeah. Okay. It, it shouldn't be as hard as cancer. Parang ganun. And even cancer, the progress with cancer is really, really good nowadays. So what more with other um, neuroprosthetics and other medical devices here in the Philippines? Okay, sir. Um, uh, siguro may pahabol lang akong question. Oh my, say go lang. <laughs> Kasi most of the stuff na this na we discussed are targeted to humans. Mm-hmm. Pero nabanggit Rin na tinatest din siya sa animal. So like, mm-hmm. are there uh, prosthetics not specifically talagang for animals siya na, na purpose? Robot wearing. Ah, yeah. Meron. Meron. Oh? Uh, if you search um, life OP, uh, L-I-T-H-E-O-P, uh, life orthotics and prosthetics, uh, orthotics and prosthetics, uh, they have products for animals, especially for dogs, because <laughs> we oh. we love dogs here Best in the friends. Philippines. This is a local company. Huh. The more you know, all right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Robot dogs win. Rick and Morty. Yeah. I think that's what I think that's what everybody's been thinking about for the past I don't know, one hour, you must cyborg stuff. But okay, okay. Well, yeah. Cool. I, mean, I used to intro with that, no? But uh, okay, no? we have to be yeah. here. Let's be grounded. Let's be grounded. Yeah, yeah. yeah true. Okay, so I guess that's enough of sci fi for today. And yeah, with all that, I think that's all the time we have for tonight. So once again, we'd like to thank our wonderful speaker, Engineer Kamagai, for giving us a talk thank and you. for answering the questions of all the participants. Yes, and we hope that everyone learned a lot from Engineer Kamagai's talk tonight. Dahil <laughs> from uh, sa mga tanong nyo pa lang, I hope <laughs> ang mga superhero dreams nyo. <laughs> and with that, we would like to call upon the NMESC 2022 co-head Kobe Biker Boy Alcantara to award our speaker with a certificate. Right. <laughs> Guapo. Sige. All right.
So, the Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, University of the Philippine Student Unit, awards this Certificate of Appreciation to Engineer Felix Alejandro D. Camagay for sharing their knowledge and expertise on biomedical engineering and neuroprosthetics during the National Mechanical Engineering Students' Convergence 2022, given this 21st of September 2022. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening and thank you for inviting me. Okay, okay. So, yeah, few years from now, I'm really looking forward to seeing like a cyberpunk Philippines. But yeah, that now's not the time. Maybe later on. Anyways, that ends day three of Enemy SC 2022 Crank Up, and we'd like to thank everybody for attending today. And we hope that you learned a lot from today's talk. And it really seems that everybody wants robot parts and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out of stuff to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as we always say, don't forget to answer our feedback form. In order to be able to claim your certificates of participation for the event, the link is posted in the comment section and will be open for one hour only. So make sure to answer as soon as you can, and make sure that you also answer a raffle form, which also should be in the comment section to join a raffle event and get a chance to win an RK100 mechanical keyboard, Edifier XDS through wireless earbuds, or 500 pesos in cash. And like what Gab said earlier, if you ever want to take masters in France and don't know to where, just buy some piss merch. It'll it got you covered. Anyway, links in the description in YouTube and in the caption for Facebook. And we'd like to thank you all for coming to Anime SC 2022 Crank Up Day Three. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. This is your host Ram. And this is your host Gab. We wish you guys a pleasant rest of the evening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.